got rid of it because I got tired of trying to fight to get out of it every time I wanted to. Plus, never have a three-legged cat with a water bed. <laughs> we had one. Mm -hmm. He woke us up in a flood. Thank yeah. you, Ezra. You're going with us. Uh, <laughs> anyway. uh, so the only other thing that I did touch base on was the mechanical lifts. Do any of you use mechanical lift currently? Foyer mm. lift, um, standing. Mm. Uh, I do when we go to facilities. Okay. Yeah, I do so. So you all feel comfortable with those? Mm-hmm. Okay. Two is better than one, two people. But. I noticed in some places, though, that I've been in a facility that I was very surprised when they said that it's a one-person Hoyer. Yes, mm. one-person transfer, and you'd be using the Hoyer. Yes. Okay. I, I was I, very surprised, and I wouldn't do it by myself. No. I just Well, and especially with some of the ones that are at home, in the facilities, they have these glorified <laughs> units, whether they're Hoyer, whether they're not. The, mm -hmm. the legs, you push a button, and the legs open up, yeah. and they're this wide, and they're nice and sturdy. Mm -hmm. and, and then you get in the home, and you've got this crickety little one that yeah. seems mm -hmm. like it's going to fall apart when you wheel it across the yeah. carpet. Of all things, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they're always best done mm -hmm. to people. But. Yeah. And most of the time, many times, um, most recently, some of the clients we've had used track devices in their homes. The ceiling mounted track devices, mm -hmm. which yeah. are much better than, than floor mounted foyers. Because mm -hmm. once you get them in it, it's like they're sitting in a, sl sitting in a swing and all you're going to do is, you're, you're, you, the device itself, you push a button and it just moves along yeah, the track yeah. by itself. And all you got to do is hold that client stable while they're moved. You ever feel like the ceiling's mm -hmm. going to come down though? Like, well, no, because they, they, they're installed they by out. professional installers mm -hmm. and they're, they, they, they're designed to hold mm -hmm. significant amount of weight. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, it's, and they can put them in bathrooms, they can put them, we had one man, he could go from his bedroom out into his living mm -hmm. room to his chair. Probably all by himself. Well, he, 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 was he could enough have. To he run could, the yeah, he could have. He could have. In fact, we have, a woman, we have a woman who lives in Winooski who does that. She My can put herself person. into yeah. her own Hoyer lift and get herself out of bed with it, and she's yeah. totally paralyzed from the waist down. She cannot stand, um, and she does her own. She can do her own transfer. She prefers not to, but she can do it, and she's successful. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it just it's a matter of. Yeah, like you said, cognitive ability and age sometimes is a factor in all those different features. Arthritis, you're going to have whatever stuff. Yeah. 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 Uh, with it. You know, the only other thing along that line is if they have a split leg Hoyer or split leg lift system. Um, oh, that's sure the thing where out. you open it and yeah. the legs go. Yeah, yeah well, yeah. that's the, that it's the, the sling that you're using. So a lot of times the mechanical lifts have a one-piece sling that fits from their shoulders to just below their knees. Mm -hmm. There's one though, because a lot of people spend a lot of time in their chair, if that's underneath them, they're sliding out. So there's one that's called a split leg mm -hmm. that goes up in the back, and then it's got these leg pieces that, that come around and underneath yeah. each leg and mm -hmm. hook to the machine. Mm -hmm. It was designed to remove from the chair. Mm -hmm. You will get in a facility and see it still there, haul it out, because then you're gonna get skin breakdown. So anyone that's in a split leg lift system, take out the split leg. Mm -hmm. And you'll find most facilities, they'll they tell you to leave it, and the clients will tell you to leave it mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. That's terrible for skin But right it should now. be removed. Yeah. But be, yeah. usually people are have clothes on, like my client George, he yeah. had pajamas on all the time, and the wife chose, you know, leave him in it. It's easier for her when I'm gone to put him to bed. Yeah. And his was a split leg, so you had to make sure that the one from the left is hooked on the right, and the one from the right, yeah. So that, if, you know, if they're going to leave it in, maybe uncross it from underneath his butt and tuck it in the side of his chair. Just that way it's not getting break down. I mean, because even with clothes, anything that bunches up uh, is going to be a problem. So we've covered everything on this and everything on the test. I am 100% certain of that because I checked it before I left. Um, did you want to review some of these? Yeah, I think that would be interesting to maybe uh, bring, use this for, the, for ourselves. Uh, yeah. So I brought a couple of little stretches and some core stability exercises for you guys. Again, anything that you do that involves exercise, therapies, and such, Please do it under the care of a licensed healthcare professional. 
This is not an individual recommendation to all of you. It's a sample of things that you could potentially do. Mm -hmm. That's my liability piece. I'm not saying everybody do this because you could or could not hurt yourself. I don't know what, you know, the condition of each person. But these are pretty basic exercises. You've got an upper trap stretch. So the upper trap, when you're lifting and you're not quite strong enough, what happens but you're lifting like this. And so in an upper trap stretch, you put one hand behind your back and one on your ear and just give a gentle press. You get a nice stretch. So that's the first one. The next one, levator scap. Same idea. The levator scap attaches from your shoulder blade up into the neck. And the same thing when you're lifting a lot, this happens. So that's a nice stretch to think about. So one hand behind your back. Turn your head away from that arm. Tip it like you're tipping your hat. Feel that stretch. Mm -hmm. Peck stretch. Everything that you do is in front of you. So you're going to get really tight in the front. So I showed you a little door stretch here. Your arms up at about shoulder height. Depending on how your shoulders are, you might have impingement and such because you've been working in this field for quite a while and you're awful tight. Um, so where your arms go in the door is going to you know, be individual. Mm -hmm. um, but hands in the door, step through, press through, and a nice stretch through your chest. Um, so I showed you that one and the corner stretch because the corner is a little bit safer. Um, so if you just here, mm. yeah. and a nice stretch. Okay. Um, then um, mm -hmm. a quad knee to chest stretch. This says for quad, but I this one is best done for like a low back, a tight low back at the end of the day. You know, just hold your knee into your chest release and the other one uh, hip flexor stretch so that's it shows it kneeling but you can do it standing where you just kind of here tucking keeping nice and tight through your core and pushing uh, the piriformis that's that nice tight muscle that, muscle that runs right across your rear end so that's the one where you it shows it lying down but you can do it sitting so you cross one foot up and just hug this knee in mm. get a nice stretch in your butt um, so that's the stretches, and then the neutral spine, that's what we went over with the lifting. So neutral spine, um, you're just on this particular one, you're on all fours, and you're not letting your back sag, nor are you letting it round, you're trying to keep it flat, and just really tense your belly. So it's not so much sucking it in, that's what a lot mm -hmm. of people think it is to tighten your belly. But a deep exhale <sighs> will bring your ribs down and in, and that activates your obliques and your transverse abs. <clears throat> so you know when people exert themselves in the gym, they're... Mm -hmm. Same idea, not that you want to be lifting someone and go... You know, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know that, that's an option. So really exhale and pull them in close to you and then drop step to where you're going. Never twist, remember that. Um, and then the knee fold... Uh, is another core stabilization. Uh, all you do is lie on your back, you find that neutral spine, you tighten your belly, and you just march your knees. Oh, you just march them up and down? Yeah. Okay. Right. It, yep. It's not a pullback all the way to your chest? Nope. It's just an alternating, trying to keep your mm -hmm. back in that same neutral position as you raise and lower. And again, this is just, you know, a little bit of something you can do weight. to keep They're yourself. They're lightweight too, right? It's not, you're not making any strenuous effort no. here. No. It's nope. all in a relaxed posture. Yep, just trying to keep yourself healthy because, again, if you are not taking care of yourself, you're not going to be able to take care of them. You're going to be at a, a higher risk for injury. Mm -hmm. And they'll get upset because, damn, where's my care? Where's Mary? Where's Mary? i got to break I'm, another yeah. one in. Yep, exactly. <laughs> Can we talk about the twist a little bit? Yeah, I'm in the car quite a bit with my client. Yeah. Twisting to go get my purse or whatever. I do a lot of twisting. Yeah. Um, we'll stop with it, Sally. I know. So it depends on how heavy your purse is, Sally, whether that's bad. Okay. So if you've got a 30 pound purse in the back seat, you're mm -hmm. then lifting and bringing over. Yeah. Then you're straining yourself. Just make sure you really tense mm -hmm. your abs when you come back. But when you're lifting your clients, you never want it to be a twist right. transfer. Okay. What about like in yoga, though, where we're, you know, twisting, we're consciously twisting. So, so I'm trunk confused about when we're... Trunk rotation isn't a bad thing. Mm -hmm. um, trunk rotation with a strenuous trunk. load repetitively mm -hmm. is not a great thing. Okay. 
So like in yoga though, you're, you're sitting upright. Yeah, and you're working on trunk rotation and increasing hmm. your range of motion. All that's great. It's mm -hmm. great stretching. It's great to keep your you know, your range of motion. You can also do some core stabilization core stabilization exercises in that transverse plane. That's what we call it. Transverse plane, that's the key, right? But when okay. you are transferring, right, your 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 transverse abdominals are not meant to be spinal rotators. Mm. They're stabilizers here in a straight plane. Mm -hmm. I mean your obliques are trunk rotation stabilizers, but you're going to be at a higher risk for injury if you're twisting under load. Okay, got it. So it's totally okay to do it in your daily life as long as you have a healthy back, mm -hmm. a healthy spine, mm -hmm. but that's something you really want to um, stay away from when you're entering the pants. Okay. Yep. Do you have right. to hip somebody into bed? I'm sorry? Hip? Use your hip, you know? <laughs> Push them in. <laughs> um, is there a proper to a non-proper way of, so you don't hurt them. There's plenty of times I've had to hit mm -hmm. people yeah. into bed so they wouldn't fall on the floor. Or into the car. Yeah. Or into a vehicle. Or is there any proper So you're just guarding them mechanics? from falling with your own body, basically. Is that what you're pretty down much to saying? Yeah. Me, I pretty much The stories them. PCA, PCA <laughs> could tell. We should write a book, eh? Right. Okay. Exactly. Um, pretty much hit them into, you know, so they wouldn't hit the floor. Mm -hmm. Right. Pretty much, yeah. So they were good. You did the right thing because that was part of what you were supposed to learn today, so you already knew it. Oh. But is there a safe way to do is that there and not a, do that? Without harming them. I mean, when you're, when they're going down, you don't think of how hard you're actually bumping them to make them... Go to where you were trying to get them. Exactly. To help them. To help them. Trying to help them. Yeah, no, I don't... I, um, I, I don't have a... You know how I'd answer that question? I'd answer that question by simply saying your awareness, your consciousness of what you're doing at the time is the safeguard. Because your, your own proprio sense and sensitivity of your body and what it's doing at a given moment will keep you from overexerting in most cases. Right? Because you know you're, you're handling another person. Mm -hmm. So it's instinctual. You're going to be defensive and try not to hurt them. Um, but your strength is a factor that can't be determined person. It has to be determined person to person. And yes, it's possible you might exert a little more strength than you should. To try to make sure that they get there. And right. The and, and, you know, that's going to be normal. But I, I still believe from my own personal life experience, my experience with body moving, because I, I used to be a martial artist, and I did a lot of stuff with dancing for years. The sensitivity we all had, the proprio sensitivity we all have of where we are in space and where our bo what our body's doing at any given time, really is, it's almost instinctual. It's like, it's like it, you respond to it naturally, you don't even think about it at, at, at most of the time. It just happens. So you know that that is a guardian for you. Mm -hmm. that will serve to protect you from hurting somebody, as a rule. It's like throwing punches. My mother was, you know, she was towards the end of her life, and she was having these things where everything would shut down. And she was like this far away from the chair, and my mother was 5'10", and she weighed 2'10". And it's like, I grabbed her the band of her sweats, and I just yanked her and threw her into her mm -hmm. recliner. It's like, oh, thank you. I mean, it would happen on the toilet. It would happen walking, and it's like, nuts. Everything shut down. She was yeah, basically yeah. dead. Yeah. Or you'd haul a cantaloupe, because she hated cantaloupe. No, <laughs> it her. Yeah. Anything. Oh. Do any of you have any questions of Gina that you haven't asked already that you might want to make about? Do you, do you make home visits yourself? No. No, I am. Um, I'm currently working outpatient for PT360. Um, you know, clientele ranging from joint replacements to sports injuries. Um, and I do per diem work um, for the Kindred Rehab Care System. Mm -hmm. So I, for six years, worked out of Birchwood and Star Farm, and my per diem work is out of Star Farm right now. 
Okay, but but you're also Larry is actually with 360 already. Oh yeah. But it would be great. We work with Christy and um, yeah. the blonde at at Shelburne. At the Shelburne. Heather. Julie. Julie. And um, but it would just be great to get one of you out to his home to amp it up for a little bit. And we've been working on the swelling of his legs and getting that. Mm -hmm. It's just one of things that are. It could be could be better in mm -hmm. his home environment. We so, don't do, um, you know, I think it's more insurance purpose than yeah. um, practice guidelines as to who yeah. can do that sort of thing in the home. Mm -hmm. And to receive, uh, I know, like home health services and such for physical therapy, um, they have to be more of a homebound client, so we wouldn't then be able to do mm -hmm. you know, like physical okay. therapy at right. 360. Yes, he has therapy. to be homebound yeah. to get it from DNA. But there are certainly things, I mean, if you're involved with this care at um, our Shelburne office, mm -hmm. I'm sure they would be happy to give you some ideas and, and of a home exercise program. Oh, yeah. I mean, the exercise is it's, it's, it's more about just the overall assessment, how, you know, what, what for, for how equipment we, and things you need? Sorry? For equipment and stuff? Yeah, equipment and, and you know, long-term care. I mean, Alan knows. It's just sort of an on, nothing's really changed, you know. And yet, nothing's really changed. Because you know? yeah, they had talked about um, installing a, a brand new shower. Did that ever occur? Well, that's a that's a side story. Yeah. It's the project got stalled. Yeah, never never occurred. Oh yeah. And, and advent, okay. that would have been a great advent, advantage for him. I don't like you. So, ladies, um, before we close, and Gina, uh, just thank you very much. This You're was very welcome. thorough, very yeah. comprehensive. Uh, we very much appreciate you coming forward and helping us to do this. No um, I'd like you to take a few minutes and complete the post-test, um, and then I'll give you the answers to the post-test so you know that you passed or failed. Um, do we get a little gold star? Do we get a little gold star if we pass? You get credit. Much. How much credit do we get for our name? You get credit. <laughs> um, That's be how much credit for your name? name? How about uh, one-tenth of a point? That could be helpful. Thank you. Oh my goodness. <coughs> Thank you, Gina. You're Thank welcome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. No other questions? If you think of anything. Are you out of the I'm Williston sorry. office then? Yes. Okay. Now, now, Gina, will you be the same uh, person who will be coming back next time? I believe so. Okay, good. That's on. I'll make sure.